International Day of Truth and Reconciliation from Canada with special guests from South Africa and Singapore. The day honors the lost children and survivors of residential schools, their families and communities, public commemoration of the tragic and painful history. National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Bill Wilson, how are you? And what would be the trigger or response or your way of acknowledging the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation? Well, um, I've been learning a lot about it, I guess, so mainly through through COVID here. So I guess like the, the trigger, um, the, obviously the, the orange shirt and the orange, I guess, is one thing to bring it to light to, to recognize everybody with that. But just hearing the stories um, and everything that's coming on through social media, uh, in the news, all that sort of thing, and just hearing what's been going on. Um, I was never aware of any of this, really. And so it's just, it's an eye-opening thing. So, um, and it just uh, it brings up a lot of questions, you know, like, why did all this happen? Um, so a lot of learning right now. And uh, um, that's one of the big things for me, just why. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate the, the thoughts. Uh, let's move to Sue Ann. Sue Ann, when... Uh, you heard about this and you've seen what's happened over the last year. Uh, what would be a thought or a prayer that you might offer today? A thought today is what the Indigenous community has always been or core to their uh, community. It's uh, respect. And we have not shown them respect for their community, for their lives, for their culture, for their language, for their foods, for their music, for their way of living, for their connection to the land. And so they have always been about unity, unity in the self, unity as a whole. And so they have been proponents of peace, peace for the greater good and peace for the personal individual. And so for me, when I heard about all of these things that were happening with the children and the residential schools, to me, it was cultural genocide. And we see that on a global scale, not just on a national scale. And so my wish is that beyond the healing, we actually move towards unity and peace. Thank you very much. And I'll get one more Canadian in there and then we'll get some of our wonderful guests from uh, Singapore and South Africa. Jacqueline, I have a feeling you've got some emotion to share about the experience and, and what, uh, what gets triggered or what is bubbling up in, in your experience uh, this day of truth and reconciliation. I think I'm still triggered and I have a hard time with this day. And I listened to a wonderful young teen speak in Chilliwack yesterday. And she said, you know, the government that created this are the ones taking a day off today. Um, and the suggestions were maybe they give their pay to a, a, an Aboriginal fundraiser, or maybe they donate clean water to all the communities that, that still don't have clean water. So for me, I'm very triggered by it because it's not just in the past. It's not something from before. It's something that's still happening today. Our indigenous communities are still suffering so greatly that they, you know, we've talked about this, they can't even bathe their children in non-contaminated water. So I feel that there's something I wanna do. I don't even know what it is yet, but you guys will remember I had the trigger for healing waters a couple of months ago. And I feel like this maybe was what it was showing me that, so I have to do something about water and I don't know what it is yet, but um, yeah, I'm very triggered by it. And, you know, you guys know, I read that book, Seven Fallen Feathers, which tells us what's actually still happening. Uh, and Dolly, when you hear about this, it might be the first time you've heard about uh, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in Canada. It's the first year that we're acknowledging it. Uh, there's ongoing impacts of residential schools uh, in Canada. Um, as a, a person who is fairly new to, to what happened in Canada, it might even surprise you because your image of Canada has always been so wonderful with maple syrup and kind people and the Royal Mounted Police and 
what, uh, what gets triggered or what would you like to share maybe has a blessing or a, a thought or a, a kind word? I think what um, Suen said, the word respect, yes. I think it's very important. Respect um, each other as a human being. And that's it. Thank you very much. And then we have uh, on the other side of the world. In fact, this is something that this trust circles talked about is that while here in the Northern hemisphere, we're moving into uh, autumn from summer, they're moving into spring from winter. And so it's been beautiful to get that opposite experience and perhaps a different experience. Uh, when you hear about this, Irene, what, uh, what gets triggered or what uh, bubbles up for you? I think truth and reconciliation, we've been exposed to for many, many years since we changed our whole um, uh, uh, new South Africa. There's been a long lasting process of truth and reconciliation, trying to get all the mistakes done previous generations sorted out or acknowledged at least, which is still, now you're talking about toilets, that is still an ongoing problem. And even though we have the truth and reconciliation and it was always a black and white, let's call it that way, um, conflict, it now moved over to black on black and it still is ongoing. And it amazes me how the whole world of us now all of a sudden starts exposing more and more of things that we have been exposed to many, many years and dealt with many, many years already and trying to find a way through. Um, it is very difficult for the oppressed, but also moving on now towards us now being basically on the other side of the whole picture. So there is a long, long process of trying to get together again, and that will take generations. It will not be solved within one or two generations. So yes, it's an ongoing process for us. Thank you very much. Uh, wise words from South Africa, who of course went through a, an incredible process that has taken years, decades, and as Irene is sharing, perhaps it will take many generations moving forward. Bill, any way to celebrate or honor or bring uh, acknowledgement for you today that, that anything uh, besides uh, wearing a wonderful uh, shirt to be representing that you you care and that you're interested to learn more um, any little last word uh, as we bring our our trust circle to a completion today yeah I think for me it's just being open-minded and, and taking the time to to learn and understand and, and you know ask questions to what's going on um, as opposed to just sitting back and, you know, not doing anything. But I think it's it's time to learn more and, and figure out solutions. Thank you. And Dolly? The word that came to my mind is healing journey. Healing. Thank you. And Jacqueline? Yeah, I think what they've been saying all along is to just listen. I think it's our job now just to listen and try to have some kindness and compassion. Um, I know this afternoon I do want to go up to the medicine wheel and leave a pair of shoes. Um, there's a new one up in Orangeville. So that's what I will do today to honor it. Uh, Sue Ann? I've sent out um, social media posts uh, early this morning in support of today. And um, Really, it's just never forgetting. And Irene, any tips from South Africa? Try and understand other cultures. Try and really make an effort and understand what's behind other cultures in order to understand and assist. Thank you. Uh, and this is one of the, the lessons from First Nations wisdom is, is a wisdom wheel. It's uh, Father Sky, Mother Earth, uh, nurturing the, the mind, the elder, the spirit, the child, the body, the youth, the heart, the adult, uh, acknowledging the seasonality, the seasonality that the planet goes through, the seasonality that we go through, and perhaps 
uh, the colors might be part of a healing. Uh, the orange that we're wearing today uh, may bring some warmth and uh, compassion to listening and also taking action. And I love the actions that some of us are, are looking to explore. I shared today, this morning at uh, 6 30 a.m. In, in Canada with our group of Uni Unity and Diversity Ambassadors for Global Dialogue. And of course, this is the first time they heard of it. And so we planted the seeds with 45 young minds there that uh, by putting together a team, by collaborating, by exploring, mm -hmm. uh, dramatic changes can happen because this has really been one of the fastest actions that I've seen the government do in a year, in less than a year, taking actions, rallying interest, and sharing something that uh, impacts us all. And so it's uh, quite uh, remarkable what uh, progress has been made and what conversations and dialogue are being initiated. And with that, I'd really appreciate and thank you all for adding any comments as we bring the circle to a close. Any last words, thoughts that you would like to share anyone before we uh, send a, off a, a prayer of, of kindness and compassion and, and respect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank with you that, and completion. and completion. Thank you. And